स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning, everyone. So, in this lecture today, I am going to continue our discussion for uh, optimization of functional with variable endpoints. And in this lecture, I am going to look at the general situation, namely when both the x and the y coordinate of the endpoints are allowed to vary. So, in this lecture, we will look at the general uh, variable boundary point. Uh, setup variable boundary part point. So, this is my part 2 of our discussion, and this is the most general case that we can have uh, for variable boundary point uh, case discussion. So, so I start my uh, my topic by saying that so far what have we done? So, so far we have allowed so far we have we have allowed uh, we have allowed the y coordinate to vary we have allowed y of x1 and y at y at x0 to vary <coughs> we have allowed these points to vary keeping keeping x0 x1 fixed we have allowed y to vary keeping x naught x 1 fixed. right? So, now we are going to do is, so we allow now, allow both, both x and y uh, to, to vary now. So, this is the scenario we are going to look at when the boundary points are such that both the coordinates are, uh, are allowed to vary. So, let us see what is the situation. Uh, through a diagram. So, what we have is the following. So, let me try to draw this diagram a bit carefully. So, this is in 2 D Cartesian framework. So, suppose we are given we are given an extremal. The extremal is described by the boundary points uh, x naught and this is y naught and the second boundary point is x 1 and let us say this is y 1 right? and we allow the perturbation to vary. So, I have that let me call this uh, perturbation as y hat of x. So, this is my perturbation. right? So, this is my y and this second curve is y hat. So, notice the way how I have drawn is both x and the y coordinate can vary. So, let us say that this particular point is x naught hat and this particular point is y naught hat. <coughs> Similarly, we could have that this particular point is x 1 hat and of course, we can continue our discussion by saying that this particular point is y 1 hat. right? So, now, uh, so which means further we are going to refer this figure as uh, f 1 right? and we are going to refer it again and again when we look at the derivation. So, what we have is the following. So, let, let my curve y from the interval x naught x 1 to r uh, be be uh, be a smooth function be a smooth function with endpoints endpoints p0 of x0 y0 and p1 which is x1 y1 so these are my uh, endpoints of the smooth curve <coughs> Similarly, I described my perturbed curve 
y hat from this time from x naught hat x1 hat to r uh, be again be again smooth smooth function uh, with endpoints p naught hat which is x naught hat y naught hat and p1 hat which is x1 hat y1 hat and we see that let me now generalize these endpoints x naught and y naught let me introduce uh, the notation x naught tilde let me say that x naught tilde is the minimum minimum of x naught comma x naught hat and i say that my x1 tilde is the maximum of x1 comma x1 hat right so now uh, so which means now since i have described so what i am going to do now is i am going to describe both this function y and its perturbed uh, quantity y hat in the extended interval x naught tilde x1 tilde right <coughs> so we see that in the perturbed interval my y of x can be defined as follows so i use i use taylor series so using taylor series right we see that y of x is nothing but the same curve y of x if my x is between is between the interval x naught to x1 so it so the original curve is recovered right now from the the point x uh, from the uh, for x in the interval x naught tilde to x naught not including x naught so so i am talking about in this particular range in this particular range when x takes its value i can always write y of x in terms of y of x naught using taylor series so this is y of x naught plus x minus x naught uh, y prime x naught right and then so i am describing in terms of x naught right x naught in gen, uh, the way we have set up our x naught tilde and x1 tilde is that x naught in the diagram at least it is greater than uh, greater greater than equal to x naught tilde uh, right <coughs> so in taylor series this becomes let me also write the term up to the second order x minus x naught square by 2 times y double prime at x naught right and this is y of x and then the third one is y of x1 plus x1 minus x of y of x1 so this is when x is in the interval from uh, from from x1 to x1 tilde and i include i don't include the point x1 so then in this other interval right i again use the taylor series expansion note the way how i have arranged the taylor series so i am assuming x1 is bigger than x and x0 is smaller than x in the previous interval so this becomes y prime of x1 plus uh, i have x1 minus x square by 2 of y double prime at x1 <coughs> right where y where where my y is uh, is a differentiable function now between the new interval x naught tilde x1 tilde so i have extended my function y of x right uh, now uh, without loss of generality i am going to assume that x naught hat where the perturbed function is defined is less than x naught we could assume the other inequality also so what i am saying is uh, so we we can for example we can assume we can assume without loss of generality that x naught hat is less than x naught or <coughs> so if that is the case uh, my y of x naught hat will be found from this first relation 
the y of x naught hat is found from first relation. Uh, so, that becomes, so it implies that y of x naught hat in terms of y of x naught, y of x naught plus x naught hat minus x naught uh, y prime x naught plus I say that this is, uh, this is order x naught hat minus x naught uh, square term, right, the higher order term. Now, suppose we also say that, let us say that the perturbation is such that it is uh, only marginal or in the sense that the distance between x naught hat and x naught, let us say this is epsilon time capital X naught. So, this is of the order of epsilon, right. So, similarly, this particular distance is of the order of epsilon times capital Y naught. So, so the perturbation is such that the perturbation is linear order. So, similarly, this is order epsilon capital X 1 times uh, this particular, uh, this particular perturbation is epsilon capital Y 1, right. So, these are my assumptions. So, the assumption is so, if that be the case, I can rewrite my function y of x naught to be, x naught had to be y of x naught minus epsilon x naught times y prime uh, x naught uh, plus order epsilon square, right. So, I can always rewrite my perturbed, uh, my y at the perturbed value in terms of y at the original value of the uh, x at the original interval, right. So, so the idea is so, the similar exercise can be done to extend my perturbed function. So, similarly, similarly I am going to extend, I, I just say that I extend this perturbed function without writing uh, the entire formula. So, I have shown the exercise for y, I assume the students will be able to do the similar exercise for y hat. So, we extend the curve y hat on the interval x naught tilde x 1 tilde right, where my y hat is y plus epsilon eta, right, y hat is y plus epsilon eta, uh, where, so I define, uh, I need a further definition, I define the distance, I define the distance between, between my y and y hat, right, to be d of y comma y hat which will be also equal to the norm of the, the difference in the value and the perturbed value plus, plus whatever uh, the difference is coming out from the end points. So, plus the distance between p naught and p naught hat plus the distance between p 1 and p 1 hat, right. So, this is the regular difference, the regular distance and the rest of the distance is coming due to the, the perturbed end points, right. <coughs> where I define, uh, where I define my norm of y minus y hat to be the supremum norm. I say that this is the supremum of, uh, of, of mod of y of x, right, uh, where, so, so I define my norm of y to be the supremum of mod of y, where x is coming from the extended interval x naught tilde x 1 tilde, right. So, we want allowed perturbations to be as close to y as possible, right. So, we want the perturbation, the perturbations are not arbitrarily, uh, uh, is not chosen arbitrary, but it is chosen arbitrarily close so that it is uh, close enough of the order of epsilon, right. So, what I said is the following, we want, we want the perturbation, we want the perturbation to be <coughs> close to y, we want the perturbation to be close to y as, uh, let me call this uh, star uh, to y as given as given by the distance 
by the distance metric by the distance metric star, but do not specify, but do not specify uh, the end points. So, our end point is a variable of the problem here. We do not know what is x naught, x 1, y naught, y 1, except that they are uh, of the order, uh, you know, they are close enough of the order of epsilon distance. So, the end points are not specified except the fact that, except that we require them, require them to be order epsilon apart. So, what I mean to say is that my x hat k, where k is 0 and 1 is x k plus epsilon times capital X k and my y naught y hat k is y k plus epsilon times capital Y k, where my where my k is 0 and 1. <coughs> okay. So, if we if we make this following assumption, I can immediately find these these norms. So, from here I can see that I can see that the norm of p k minus p k hat is equal to epsilon times square root of x k square plus y k square where k is from 0 and 1 right okay so then what we have is the following so let me so i am now ready to describe the the extremal for the class of functional with variable endpoints so let us start our background so let me say that let me say that j be the functional let j be the functional functional such that j of y is equal to integral from x 0 to x 1 f of x comma y comma y hat d x such that f is a smooth function. So, that is my underlying assumption of smooth function of x y and y hat. <coughs> okay. So, I need j to be stationary j is stationary to find the extremal right so i need j stationary so that the difference between j of y minus j of y hat minus j of y is at most of order epsilon square right uh, where uh, that is whenever whenever the distance between y hat the perturbed value and y is of order epsilon right where epsilon in the limit epsilon goes to 0. <coughs> okay. So, let me start describing this variation of the functional j. So, my variational of the functional j, <coughs> j of y hat minus j of y is the difference of these two integrals x naught. So, j of y hat is defined from x naught hat to x 1 hat of f of x y y hat d x x y y hat prime d x minus integral from x naught to x 1 f of x y y hat of d x. <coughs> well, x y y prime of d x right and this becomes notice that I know that x naught hat is x naught plus epsilon capital X naught. So, I know the relation. So, I know that this perturbed value of the endpoints are order epsilon apart from the original value. So, I get that this is this and this is this is this of f of x y y hat d x minus integral from x naught to x 1 of f of x y x y y prime d x. Okay. So, what I see is let us start. Uh, so, we can simplify this further. So, notice that I can break down this first integral into set of three integrals. Uh, in the first integral, let me look at the interval from x naught to x 1 and in this interval, I have the common difference f at uh, well f at uh, 
uh, y hat minus f hat y. So, in this interval I have the, the standard difference, both the functions are defined in this interval x naught x 1. right and then I am left with the other two intervals. One interval is from uh, x naught plus epsilon to x naught with a plus sign or I can say that this is also equal to integral x naught small x naught to, so this is small x naught to small x naught plus epsilon times capital X naught and this is also equal to Notice that this will be in terms of a minus sign because x naught appears with a minus sign here. So, this is minus f of in this interval only the perturbed value of the function is defined. So, this becomes x comma y hat comma y hat prime dx and then the second interval is uh, from x 1 to x 1 plus epsilon capital X 1 of f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime d x right. So, now I have these three in integrals and setting we need to find the uh, stationary point or the stationary function we need to set this the sum of these three integrals equal to 0 and simplify. Notice that notice that I can uh, I can find the difference in the first integral I can find the difference and I see that this is this is order well this is nothing but uh, or well this is of order in the order epsilon up to order epsilon terms this becomes the following quantity via standard Euler Lagrange argument this is uh, order epsilon times eta of del f del y prime from x naught to x 1 plus integral eta of partial f partial y minus d d x of partial f partial y prime d x right. So, we have we have this entire expression and the other so, so, this comes from standard integration by parts by taking the Taylor series expansion of this perturbed value subtracting and then in using integration by parts. Then we have to let me call this uh, let me call this this integral by 1 and let me call this integral by 2. So, I need to evaluate this first and the second integral. So, my first integral my first integral is integral from x 1 to x 1 plus epsilon capital X 1 of the perturbed value of this quantity d x and this I can write note that in this interval. So, we are going to assume assume that f of x comma y hat comma y hat prime is is almost equal to the function itself. It itself in the interval. So, the function has not changed uh, in the interval uh, x 1 to x 1 plus order epsilon perturbation right. So, this assumption so assume up to order epsilon square correction right. So, I can assume that the function has not changed much except up to order epsilon correction right. So, if that is the case which means that this function will be the same function as uh, the, the original uh, func uh, function at the extremal value. So, this becomes the length of the interval is epsilon x 1 times the value of the function at f of x comma y comma y prime right and uh, well, so this is now uh, as if the interval is small enough. So, this is evaluated at x equal to x 1 right and plus the rest of the correction terms are order epsilon square terms. So, similarly I can simplify the second integral. 
which is from x naught to x naught plus order f capital X naught of the perturbed quantity, which I can under simplifying assumption as previously write down as epsilon times capital X naught times f of x comma y comma y prime evaluated at the point x equal to x naught plus order epsilon square correction. right? So, I am ready to write down, I am ready to write down the functional, the variation in the functional. So, so from all this discussion, my variation in the functional j of eta comma y, which is, uh, which is limit epsilon going to 0 in the limit j of y hat minus j of y by epsilon turns out to be the following set of quantities. We have clubbed everything together to come to this uh, relation that this is partial f partial y prime at x naught to x 1 plus integral of x naught to x 1 of eta of del f del y minus d d x del f del y prime of d x plus x 1 times f of x comma y comma y prime evaluated at x 1 minus x naught of f of x comma y comma y prime uh, evaluated at uh, the point small x naught. Right? Okay. Well, although we have written this variation, we know that these points small x naught and small x 1 are still variable. So, this is not still not in a form that we are ready to evaluate. So, let us now do a little bit more simplification. So, so far we have expressed the variation in a in a more convenient form. Uh, so, so what I just said is the following. Note, note that uh, this quantity eta of partial f partial y prime at x naught and x 1 uh, is difficult to calculate difficult to find since, since my points x naught and x 1 are, are variable, since my point x naught and x 1 are variable and we need to find, we need to find a, nat a, a natural set of, a set of natural boundary condition. We need to find a generalized, a generalized natural boundary condition. boundary condition. So, which means that the perturbed end points and the perturbation eta. So, which means that we have to write down these, this uh, expression on the right hand side such that certain consistency criteria are also satisfied. So, what are these consistency criteria? So, so what I just said is the following. The perturbed, the perturbed endpoints uh, x naught hat comma y naught hat slash x 1 hat comma y 1 hat the two perturbed endpoints and the perturbation function and the perturbation function eta right certainly they will not in in the most simplifying case will not vanish at the endpoints where the endpoints are also not well defined they are also varying but certainly eta is going to satisfy some constraints which we are going to outline right now also known as the should satisfy should satisfy uh, certain compatibility condition so what are these compatibility condition compatibility compatibility condition so they must satisfy these compatibility condition so, note that I am going to take, I am going to take my x naught. So, note my, uh, my x naught, my x naught hat is equal to x naught plus epsilon capital X naught and my y naught hat is the perturbation of y naught plus capital Y naught. Okay. Now, also note, let me call this relation A now, also note, 
note that my y hat the perturbed value of y which is also equal to so this is the perturbed value of y at the starting end point that is uh, at x naught which is also equal to y naught plus plus epsilon capital y naught but this is also equal to y hat at x naught hat right so this is a perturbed value of y which is also equal to y hat x naught hat by the definition above is x naught plus epsilon capital x naught right but this is by the definition of y hat this is also equal to y at x naught plus epsilon capital x naught plus epsilon of eta of x naught plus epsilon capital x naught right i'm just using the standard definition of the perturbed value of the function y hat and and the perturbed value of the the coordinate x hat so now uh, so what have we got so notice that that this particular quantity is nothing but y of x naught so we are using taylor series plus epsilon times x naught times y prime x naught plus order epsilon square so i have used taylor series right and i can use notice that up to order epsilon terms this is nothing but eta of epsilon at x naught you already have a eta which is multi sorry epsilon which is multiplied to eta so up to order epsilon term this quantity is x, eta of x naught right plus order epsilon square right so which means which means the following which means that on the left hand side we have y naught plus epsilon capital y naught and on the right hand side we have the following this is also equal to y naught plus epsilon x naught y prime at x naught right plus epsilon eta at x naught okay so what have we got is we subtract this y naught and further what have we got further is that i can well i can see that uh, i can derive what is eta at x naught from here i see that eta at x naught i can definitely cancel epsilon everywhere so eta at x naught comes out to be y naught minus F minus x naught times y prime at x naught right plus order epsilon terms so this is the consistency criteria i was talking about so that all the definitions are consistently defined so this is my consistency uh, criteria right similarly i have the other definition of eta at the other end point so eta at x1 turns out to be y1 minus x1 at y prime at x1 plus order epsilon term right so now we are ready to we are ready to simplify our variation of the functional so so let me call let me call this entire relation as 3 right so this entire relation that i have written as 3 so so from 3 my variation in j of eta comma y is integral from x not to x1 of eta of partial f partial y minus ddx of partial f partial y prime dx plus now i can substitute uh, substitute the value of eta notice that in 3 we have to substitute the value of eta at x1 and value of eta at x0 which we can readily do uh, using our consistency criteria so i see that this is also equal to after substitution and simplification we get the following set of quantities we get that this is y1 again going back i get i have a quantity here x1 uh, minus uh, so y1 
right. So, x 1 is here. So, I get x 1. So, x 1. So, I let me just write down everything. So, I get x 1 uh, f f at x 1 x 1 f at uh, x 1 minus x naught f at x naught. Uh, then I have uh, plus uh, plus. So, what have we got for the cons consistency criteria? So, y 1 and y naught, right. So, plus y 1 times partial partial f partial y prime at x 1 minus y naught at partial f partial y prime at x naught plus the final uh, set of two uh, quantities are plus x 1 times minus y prime partial f partial y prime at x 1 and then minus x naught at minus y prime times partial f partial y prime at x naught right and we set this functional equal to 0. So, the special case, uh, so, so let me just combine everything. So, my function, the variation of the functional is integral from x naught to x 1 of eta of partial f partial y minus d d x of partial f partial y prime of d x plus, plus uh, y 1 times partial f partial y y prime at x 1 minus y naught times partial f partial y prime at x naught x naught plus now I am going to couple some of the terms x 1 times f minus y prime partial f partial y prime at x naught well at x 1 minus x naught of f minus y prime partial f partial y prime at x naught right ok. So, then uh, let us look at the special case because I need to uh, look I need to conclude something more. So, in the special case if I have uh, we we go back to our fixed end point criteria that is my end points are fixed right. So, this means that x k capital x k and capital y k they are all 0 there is no variation k is 0 and 1. So, all these extra 4 terms they vanish and then my variation reduces to this integral constraint and from there I get from lemma 2 lecture 2 that my Euler Lagrange equation are recovered ok. So, in the special case scenario we must have that this must hold ok. So, the standard this is my standard Euler Lagrange uh, condition right ok. So, let me just recap by introducing two new variables here. So, let me just introduce two variables uh, or let me just introduce two note, uh, new notations. So, I am going to uh, uh, I am going to denote p, p being the so called momentum in the physical community people doing uh, applied physics will denote p by this quantity del f del pi y prime and I am going to denote h in this case my h is the Hamiltonian Hamiltonian by by y prime del f del y prime minus f right and I see that further I in introduce that delta x k my variation in in the perturbation points from x k to x k hat uh, is well. So, the, the, the notation is delta x at x k is capital X k. So, this is of the order epsilon and similarly my variation in y at the point y k 
is capital Y K, where K is from 0 and 1 and from, from uh, so, so my condition 3 now can be reduced to the following set of condition. From 3, I have the first the satisfaction of the Euler Lagrange equation d d x of partial f partial y prime is equal to 0. So, I have the Euler Lagrange equation and further I have that p times so, I am now clubbing my set of four boundary condition in terms of p, h, delta x and delta y. So, notice now my, my coupled boundary condition is p delta y minus h delta x at x 0 to x 1 is 0. So, in the more concise notation, I have now come up with the condition, the boundary natural boundary condition for the general class of variable endpoint problems, right. So, this is my additional, well, additional endpoint, endpoint constraint, right, additional endpoint constraint, right, okay.